Okay. Okay. Showtime. Good, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, That's everybody. Here. Welcome, Hello. welcome. There's Gwen. Fantastic. Okay. We've got our, our veteran in the house. So good morning, Gwen. Gwen is gonna... <laughs> All right. Miss Amanda just joined. All right. Excellent. Excellent. And we got Ron Millsap too. Okay, good. Yeah. So with Sean and, and Ron Millsap are in the house. That's good. And Amanda asked you. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Hello. Wonderful. Um, okay. Hello, everybody. You know, want to say thank you for coming out to the Chatham Business Association meeting today. Uh, today is March 14th. We are doing something special for you. We're doing access to capital and we've got some partners on the call today. And so we're going to do things a little bit different because we want to make sure you guys get the information that you need to get and ask them the questions you want to ask, right? Normally, we don't have this many bankers, this many resources in one spot to share, all right? And so um, I wanted that uh, Gwen, and if Gwen's comfortable, um, start us off with the original like five minutes that we do, but I do not want to do the roundabout hellos, this is my company presentation. I want you guys to share that information in the chat. Um, that way people can have your resources that way. And at the end of the meeting, we can of course do introductions. But today, because we got so many lenders and so many people on the call, I wanna make sure they get a chance to go through their whole presentations and go from there, all right? So um, Gwen, are you able to talk? I see you there. Um, welcome back. <laughs> That's good. All right, um, I'm not hearing your voice, but um, what we'll do is, can you, hear, can you hear us, Gwen, or no? Hey, Melinda. Okay. All right, so what we'll do is this. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, if we could, um, Charles, send out the meeting minutes to everybody so they can see the meeting minutes. We're going to do a moment of silence really quickly for uh, people who are not here or who couldn't make it or who have passed or something like that. So we're going to do a Quick um, prayer, moment of silence. All right, very cool. Ted Hollander, thank you for doing what you what I asked you to do, which is to drop your information in there in the chat. Um, everybody else, please, if you have something you wanna promote, please drop it in the chat today. We're gonna do things a little bit differently. All right, so we just did a moment of silence. Hold on one second, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, Fantastic. thank you, okay. All right, so Thank Gwen has always been the person that starts us off, and I like that. Um, so Gwen, go ahead and do your thing, but do not hand it over to everybody. We're going to do get the funding thing today. All right, so no, you, 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 everything is good. We're just going to do the minutes real quick. Look at them and. Uh, mm -hmm. I, Thank, um, thank you everyone for joining us today for the monthly membership meeting of the Chatham Business Association. We're glad that you were able to make it. What a perfect timing, given the the climate we're in right now with the two bank failures to have bankers oh, yes. on the line. So I just feel like, I mean, this was this was meant to be. So thank you all for being here. And I'm just going to let um, Carl take over the meeting as he's done over the last couple of months. Thank you, Carl, for filling in for me. And just go ahead. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, you want me to do the bios? I can do your bios. Yeah, let's let's get those bios out. Um, before, I have them. And I also want you to know that the, the banking industry is safe. You guys saw the government went in there and backed everything. So there's nothing to worry about. There's no risk. If there's any questions about that, we can answer that afterwards. But you saw those deposits are safe. Your payrolls will be met. Your funds are in the account. I've been answering those questions all yesterday. So does everybody know your money's fine. All right. So uh, go ahead. Let's get those bios out in front. Um, we're starting off with a, uh, the, the one that's the pretty ones that you guys had, Charles. Yeah, the debt. Yeah. Are you going first, mm -hmm. uh, Carl? Who's going up first? And can I interrupt for one for one second? Sure, um, of course you can. Thank you so much. We just want you to remember that this year, Chatham Business Association is a SBA community navigator. Uh, the Community Navigator Pilot Program is sponsoring uh, these meetings for the last, for you know, they're the second year. And the reason why we're bringing this banking industry to you, if you've been on the road show with us and we've been marketing this uh, meeting today, is because the SBA wants CBA to help businesses get prepared for contracting opportunities. And a component of that 
is having a team, a financial team, a legal team, and an accounting team. So what we have been very blessed with, if you were in our road show in January, you attended our meeting in person at the Discover Center, um, and we're coming back again next month, we'll be in person. If you were there, you know that there is a team of us, Chatham Business Association. I think Vanessa Talaferro is on there. She did a wonderful um, workshop on capacity statements building just last week with us. Um, we're doing certifications workshop. We're doing this one about financial uh, planning. We've got Carl has been on meetings with us as part of the assessment process, which means one-on-one. -on -one. BMO Harris has been part of the program. They met with us as a partner. They've been helping us get businesses, different types of funding and lending products to help you get ready to engage and know about federal contracting and opportunities. So I just wanted to do our commercial about uh, the SBA Navigator Program, the expectation is that you will do your one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. And as a result of this year, we've been able to waive our membership to small businesses because of this program. So I just needed to say that. And I think Jennifer probably said it also, but she, just to remind everybody and sorry for interrupting. Right, perfect. Um, no problem at all, Melinda. Carl, I'm turning it back over to you. Um, your bio didn't come up correctly, so I'm going to let you introduce yourself. But uh, I'll say this, though. You know, Carl has been an extremely uh, important part of the Chatham Business Association's board. Um, I consider him a friend, but he has, you know, the people in the, in the financial industry, you know, some of us can tend to be a little bit too, I don't know, cold sometimes. But this guy here, he has a lot of heart. Oh, there you go. He, he has an extensive background in commercial and business banking with over 10 years of financial industry experience. Prior to joining the Fifth Third, Carl served as a business banking officer and through his consistent customer-focused work, work ethic, has been recognized as a resource leader and connector in the community. And this is what I was trying to say about Carl. He is a leader. He is a connector. I, you know, he connected me with this office where I am today, the people that I am so glad to call my landlords. He is a small business community leader for Fifth Third and partners with business owners to identify all of their financial needs. He takes a cons consultative approach and to deliver specific advice, customized solutions that offer the convenience that offer value and convenience. He's a graduate of Florida A&M University with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He also resides in Chicago with his family. He's active on boards of Growing Home, CBA, Chicago Neighborhood Initiative, NHS, uh, and he also enjoys traveling, very extensive travel, entrepreneurship, staying physically active, supporting his children in their interests. Without further ado, I bring to you the uh, master ceremonies for today, Mr. Carl Riley II. Thank you. Thank, that was awesome. That was way, <laughs> that was awesome. So thank you. Um, let's go to the next one because I want to see uh, Alanias. We're giving you what we're doing is we're giving you guys an understanding of who's on the call today. And that way you can figure out who you want to listen to and capture their information. All right. So there you go, Alania. So Alania is a senior loan officer. You want me to read her bio, Carl? Yes, please. Yes, please. She's a senior loan officer for Greenwood, Greenwood Archer Capital, which is a non for profit community development financial institution that works to provide investments, including loans and grants, as well as business development support to small and underserved businesses throughout Cook County. Since joining GAC in 2018, Alani has played an integral role with helping businesses navigate through the application process, providing business planning assistance, credit coaching, and credit facility structuring that aids in removing barriers to create access to capital. She also provides pre and post loan business support services to entrepreneurs identifying needs, exploring additional resources to help enrich a business enrich your business's operations. On any given day, you'll find Alani conducting access to capital workshops to ensure that the underserved entrepreneurs are informed on the resources necessary to create and scale businesses. She's a graduate of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, where she received her Bachelor of Arts degree in political science. Alani is passionate about creating policies that work to decrease inequities for underrepresented individuals. During her time at Yale, she served as the vice president for Yale's Black Women's Coalition, president of students of the diaspora, I can never say that word, whatever it is. And it's, <laughs> thank you, I can never say it, member of the 
uh, AKA sorority. It, we, you got all that, okay? <laughs> Without further ado, to introduce to you Miss Alani Harris. Alani, say hi to everyone. Hi, good morning, everyone. Pleasure nice. to be in the room with you all again. Keep it moving, nice. Carl. Yeah, next one. You're yep. in, okay, the next person we're bringing up to you, Miss Amanda Askew. All right. No, Tiffany Taylor. I'm sorry, Tiffany Taylor, my bad. Okay, we'll do Tiffany. Tiffany Taylor, executive director. She joined C3 Funding in January of 21 as executive director. Tiffany leads the strategy planning and capital raising for a C3 Fund to help close the wealth gap for BIPOC and women's real estate investors who are revitalizing distressed properties in low to moderate income communities. Most recently, Tiffany served as the Community Reinvestment Act CRA Investment Officer for Wintrust Financial. In that role, she managed a portfolio of over 250 million in investments across multi-asset classes such as loan pools of CDFIs, small business investments comp companies, low income housing tax credits, e equity equivalent investments, et cetera. Additionally, she was an underwriter in the middle market and capital markets. Tim, Tiffany also serves as the loan committee chair for Community Investment Corporation, CIC, for one to four units, loan committee, as, and was also a loan committee member for CIC's multifamily lending program. Prior to joining Wintrust, she started her career as a, at J.P. Morgan, where, she, where her product knowledge spanned across asset management and syndicated loans. Tiffany is a member of the African American Association's of CDFI and CEOs, and sorry to trip over your bio, Tiffany, but you are absolutely fabulous, and we can't wait to hear from you as well. Where's Tiffany? Thank Hello, you, Tiffany. Welcome, everyone. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and then Vashon, BMO Harris. Sean? Okay, Harper you're going to have to put that one up. I don't see. Okay, here we go. Vashon Harper Young is Vice President, Senior Manager of Vertical vertical industry programs and co-heads the BMO for women's black Latinx and native owned businesses. Businesses, a 300 million five year commitment aimed at breaking down barriers faced by minority businesses, helping to drive an inclusive economic recovery. She has been in the bank in banking for over 25 years in a variety of sales management and individual contributor roles, joining B BMO Harris in 2003 as part of the inaugural business banking micro lending team. She received the Award of Excellence as top leader and has received the Raising the Bar Leadership Award from BMO Alliance for Women of Chicago. Throughout her banking career, Bashan Hopper has been supporting small businesses as a trusted advisor, providing access to capital and business education training. She is most proud of the opportunity to have launched the BMO for Black and Latinx Business Special Purpose Credit Program and being a part of the program's expansion to women and native owned businesses. She's an active member of the Chicago Chicagoland community, serving the idea candidates, board chair, board member of the Associate Association House of Chicago, a member of the Elias, the, I'm sorry, Allies for Community Business. Portfolio Advisory Council, Program Director at Freedom Hillside Church, Board Advisor to the John Waite Foundation, a member of the NAACP and Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Inc. Bashan earned her, BA, her bachelor's degree in business communications from Illinois State University and has an MBA from Keller Graduate School of Management. Wow, we got some powerful people on this, this team this morning. Welcome Bashan, say hello to everyone. Good morning, thank you. Can't wait John's, to hear from you as well. And, and, and we got uh, Millsap is here too. Ron, we know Ron Millsap, everybody. So, you know, you've seen him at all the meetings. He's always been around. He's at BMO also now. So just so you know, you got two BMO bankers here making it happen for us. So, all right. And we got wonderful Jocelyn, IFF. And now we have Jocelyn Velasquez. She is a senior leader at IFF. IFF is, is a Midwest-based lender, real estate consultant, and developer that supports nonprofits with bringing transformative community projects to life. In her role, she is responsible for de deal origination and underwriting activities across Northwest Indiana and Illinois. Jocelyn, is it Jocelyn or Jocelyn? I said it correctly? Jocelyn. 
<laughs> okay, got you, Jocelyn. Jocelyn is a passionate solutions-oriented community development professional. She is deeply committed to a profession to a profession and life that centers advancing racial equity and in her spare time enjoys volunteering on various boards. She currently serves as the finance co-chair for Young Nonprofit Professional Network at Chicago's at Chicago of Chicago, treasurer for the Star Farm Chicago, a nonprofit urban farm, farm is that farm? In, in back of the yards, in back of the yards, okay, is a member of the Elevated Chicago's Capital Programs Working Group and City of Chicago's Food Equity Council Working Group, and recently joined Development Advisory Boards to Bright Star Community Development Corporation and Turning Red Line turning red lines green. This is, a, this is in the North Lawndale area. In addition, she is a member of the Chicago Foundation for Women's Southside Giving Circle and mostly, most recently served as project advisor reviewer for 2022 Chicago Prize applicant pool. Her hobbies, interests outside of work include anything in the realm of health and wellness, spending time with her brothers and lending her financial expertise to her dad, who operates a small business. She is extremely busy. Um, welcome, Jocelyn. Thanks, everybody. Pleased to be with you all. Well, One excellent. consistent thing with all of all of these bankers is the amount of organizations that they volunteer with. That says a lot about about them. Honored to have you all. Who's next? We got Amanda. Okay, Amanda. Amanda, ask you. Amanda, ask you. I got right Amanda. Let's let her speak. And so, go ahead, Amanda. So, Amanda Askew has been a lender with uh, with the Alice Wright Community Business for like at least five years, and she's been fantastic with getting funds to the community, right? So, if you've got a business or a company that is starting up, and you need a you know that advice on how to get organized and do all your stuff, she's gonna have that application for you. Uh, she's been a key resource, uh, you know, a cornerstone of the community. Um, getting people to access the information. Um, so if you don't know these people, you need to add them. I think they're dropping their information um, in the chat. And so, I, Amanda, can you can you uh, unmute for a second just to say anything? Fill in the gaps. Anything I missed? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Amanda Askew, and I am a senior community lender with Allies for Community Business. We are a local CDFI here. We serve. <clears throat> Illinois and our neighboring state, Indiana, and we provide uh, small business loans, lines of credit, and free business coaching to anyone, whether you just started your business yesterday or you've been an established entrepreneur for over 20 years. We're here to serve um, no matter loan size, smallest amount being 500, highest being 100,000. Thank you guys for having me, and I look forward to this conversation. All right. So the cool thing is Amanda's going to, she kind of started us off a little bit, which is cool, but she's going to finish this up with in the end also. Um, she can jump, jump your information in there, right? So we're going to roll now. And I, I have this kind of set up in a way for you to, to kind of, if you're a startup company, uh, you know, you're going to hear from Amanda and Alania, and then you're going to roll into if you're a not-for-profit and you want to get that building, you're going to hear from Jocelyn from IFF. And then after that, if you're an investor, you have a one to four unit idea and you want to buy a building, you want to fix some of these vacant lots and turn them into buildings and create some equity and create some jobs. You're rolling right with Tiffany Taylor. And then Vimo Harris is going to kind of anchor us with this line of credit, kind of tell us a little bit about that and some of the things they're doing for our, our community. And then I'm going to fill in the gaps, right? So I'll ask a few questions along the way, um, but I'm going to give people to give a chance to do their presentation. So Alania, you're up. Um, Charles, can you key up Alania's presentation? And if you have any questions at all, please, um, in the chat, you can type the question. You can send a question directly to the person, or you can send an email to, um, to let's say, who's comfortable with taking an email right now? Questions. Is there anybody? Okay, uh, send an email to questions. Jennifer. Oh. If you don't have Jennifer's email address, just send it to her and we'll, we'll go from there, right? I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Right. So um, guys, this is about getting you guys the access to the money. And I wanna give you all that access and then help you out. So here we go. And from this, go ahead, Alania, you've got it. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Alani. I I'm a loan officer here at Greenwood Archer Capital, and I just want to provide you a little bit of information regarding a resource that is CDFIs for smaller business loans. So if we can advance the slide. 
So first I wanna just introduce GAC to the space, making sure that you know who you're hearing from and just provide you a brief overview of who we are and what our mission and vision is. So really quickly, GAC's mission is to, and you'll have to like it is, lend our knowledge and capital so that we can reverse the impact of institutional racism, grow independent, vibrant black communities and create an environment led by purpose. So all of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis really emphasizes our work and our mission to do just that. So we work to create equitable access to capital across the communities. Thank you. This is a brief summary of our story. I won't go into that much depth, but we were um, created in 2012 under the former name of Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives Microfinance Group. Um, really high level, we became a CDFI in 2014. Um, 2017 was when we really introduced one of our first programming to really talk and tackle a lot of the issues that we've seen be a result of institutional racism, and that was PERC, Pathway to Enterprise for Returning Citizens, which we'll all hear a little bit later in this presentation. Um, and then fast forward to today, in 2021, we did go through a rebrand to pay homage to Black Wall Street, um, or the Greenwood District that's in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So Greenwood and Archer actually met at the epicenter that was Black Wall Street. So I will ask you to advance our slide. So we have values that we um, try to pull throughout not only our external relationships with clients and applicants, but also just internally and making sure that we are um, being innovative in our approach, but also leading uh, with transparency and being fair in our underwriting. Um, we lead with a passion and commitment to support Black entrepreneurs. We ensure that our products are accessible and adequately meets the needs of our clients. Um, we try to have innovative and bold approaches to lending um, in the spaces that we serve. And we value the community voice. So a lot of the pro products that we've developed so far has been um, really from listening to our clients and hearing their stories and figuring out how we can support them a little better. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but also exhibit optimism and a strong will to create these opportunities and grow these environments and grow these communities throughout the city of Chicago and foster humanity in the workplace and beyond. A lot of our credit criteria you'll see is a lot less black and white. We definitely depend on bringing in humanity to the numbers. So we won't just say you, because you don't meet your minimum credit score requirement, you won't be eligible for our lending criteria, but we will just continue to build those relationships with applicants so that when they do become borrowers, that they will have a trusting relationship with the people who um, are handling their accounts. And we strive to make investments that create a sustainable impact. You can advance the slide. So um, if you'll see our slogan is funding equity. And when we say that, we mean it in all sense of the, of the word. I'm not going to define equity for you all. You all can definitely read the slide. Um, but just whatever comes to mind when you think of equity, when you think of trying to bring uh, disenfranchised, disenfranchised and disinvested communities to a place where they can be on the same playing field, that's pretty much what drives a lot of our work. It's just making sure that we're intentional in our underwriting, we're intentional in the products that we provide, and just all of our work comes with intention to support those who have historically been overlooked. Next slide. So this is our impact. Um, these numbers just show what we've been able to successfully do um, year to date. Well, not year to date, since inception. Um, $21,000 $21, have been, I'm sorry, $21 million have been deployed in grants and loans through GAC. Our average loan size is around $26,000. And I will highlight that a little bit more. Um, when we say our average loan size is $26,000, I really want you all to realize that our internal capacity for about five years since 2012, so 2012, like 2017 was 25,000 and then it grew to 50,000 and now we're at this 100,000 and then we have a special product for 200,000. So as we continue to introduce products, we see that our average loan size continues to grow along with us. 81% um, of our loans go to black entrepreneurs, 32% are for startup businesses, 71% service the low to moderate income um, spectrum, 48% of loans go to women borrowers. We have serviced 6,000 small businesses and um, our businesses through lending products that we've been able to provide has created and retained 1,400 jobs within the community. So I'll go through a brief overview of each of our different lending products. And I know I'm going against time, so I'll kind of breeze through them just briefly. Um, so if you don't mind advancing through the next slide for me. 
The first one is our general lending, which does go up to 100,000. That product does pretty much service all of your business needs. There are a specific group of businesses that unfortunately we cannot service at this time. Those do include the passive real estate businesses, um, non for profits and it also includes the adult facing industries and I'll leave that for your interpretation. Um, additionally, we have a product that really addresses the concern that black entrepreneurs have not had the access to own and have the asset of real property in their business. And this product was designed and developed through a collaboration with the West York Forte Foundation um, to provide up to $200,000 lending capital for the purposes of purchasing commercial real estate. It can be mixed use, but 200,000, 3% for the first five years. Um, again, no minimum credit score and your amortization is based on a 10 year term. Our next product is called Empower. Empower is a program that we have created through, again, another collaboration with another nonprofit, um, Business Services Collective, in which we're supporting the entrepreneurs that are in the construction industry and construction space. So they receive technical assistance through our partner. They also have access to accounting, bidding, and estimating services, as well as a line of credit that is at a fixed interest rate, well, a floating interest rate of prime but the capital is up to 50,000 revolving. Then the next slide. Our, another, our next product that I'll talk about is called Healthy Living, Healthy Financing. This is really to address the issues of food deserts within our community. Um, our team, our staff has grown up in the communities that we hope to serve. And what we've seen is that their access to healthy food options has definitely been an issue for uh, the people living there. And what this does is promote and incentivizes those businesses who have um, worked to attack and address that uh, concern. So this can include anyone from the transporter, the cultivator, the retailer, the manufacturer, um, or the actual grocer themselves looking to provide healthy food and healthy food options to our communities. And it can be a mixed use of debt. So it can be a line of credit and or it can be a term loan, whichever fits whatever the you know, the needs of the business are at that time. Pathway to Enterprise for Returning Citizens, I mentioned this to you all earlier. It launched in 2017. Um, it, it became a thing, it was an idea that was began in 2016, but it really took off running in 2017. And this is a collaborative approach to addressing the issue of high um, incarceration rates and high recidivism rates for people who are returning from prison. So it comes with not only um, lending capital, which is fixed at 6%, but it also comes with a entrepreneurial program. So depending on where you are in your business, if you've already been doing the work, but you need just a little bit more guidance on getting your business footing and getting that back office support, Perk is just for you. But even if you are you have an idea in your mind, we also have a track that supports you. Um, even recently, we have started to think even more innovatively and focus and create cohorts that are focusing strongly on different industries. So we recently ended a cohort for box trucking and we were able to successfully train entrepreneurs looking to get into the trucking industry, but maybe wanted to start a little smaller because as you know, if you want to get into 18 wheeler, there are higher restrictions. So this was something that was developed in the actual, um, the actual curriculum came from one of our previous PERC participants um, in a collaboration with him. So not only are we supporting you all through the loan process, but beyond that as well. And then the final project that we'll talk about is Community Micro Equity Fund, which is a partnership with Sunshine Enterprises. It is a 25,000, up to 25,000 um, EQ2 investment, which means it's patient capital. It looks like equity, but it's not equity. We don't take equity in your business, but it sits on your balance sheet. Um, it's patient, 0% interest for the first three years, no payment required until that third year commences. At the end of that three-year period, you can either pay down the entirety of the loan or transition it to a traditional debt service in which you'll be paying monthly principal and interest payments. So I went through a lot, <laughs> but those are just a brief summary of the different programs and different innovative approaches that GAC has begun to provide to our communities. And if you don't right. mind dancing. So you gave them a lot. You gave me a lot of good stuff there, right? But you remember this guy. So they, they've got a program for people who are returning citizens. So if you need money for a business and you... You had a, a situation in your youth and you want to get a business started. You got, you know, Alania's team here, Greenwood Archer can do some things for that. You've got a situation where if you want to buy a small building, 
200,000 bucks and the bank's not making it happen the right way. You got an opportunity to do, you know, that, that property, right. With them too. And then if you, you've got a situation where it's a, um, you know, this is an idea, you've been working with it. You, you want to, you know, I don't know, get it off the ground. It's been working in your garage. Um, they've got that small loan. Um, if you have bad credit and you want to rebuild your credit, they help you with that, right? So now I can come to you or BMO can come to you in two years with your tax returns and say, hey, let's do a bigger deal now, all right? So this is your entry point, all right? There's no excuse. Um, just don't borrow any money unless you're going to make some money off of it, all right? So if you got an idea, you borrow that money, put it to work immediately. That cannot be just whatever dead money. It needs to be money that you're moving, all right? So keep going. Okay, thank you so much, Carl. If you all can just see the screen, these are the different reasons for which our loans can support your business. Um, again, they do include building, building improvements, furnishing and fixtures, limited consolidation of business debt, equipment, inventory, things of that sort. But we have also service and we'll continue to service a multitude of different industries and they are listed below. Again, if your industry was not specifically listed earlier in our restricted industries, then more than likely we can support you um, if, just in case you don't see what your business may fall into on this list here. And then if you don't mind advancing the slide, so what does it take? So um, when we're looking at startup businesses, because we do consider startup businesses, startup businesses are uh, over 30% of our portfolio, um, we want to make sure that you can really speak to your business. We want to make sure that you can provide as much insight to your business as possible. So when we say clear and concise elevator pitch, you may get on a call with me and I'm like, okay, I have about 30 minutes to kind of sit and talk with you about your business plan, sit and talk to you about this. And then we can get the ball running from there. And I want to see what you can tell me, even outside of your business plan, um, because your business plan tells us a lot. The business plan is research. The business plan tells me that you've done the work to tell me that you're ready to go into the industry. But your elevator pitch tells me that you're confident enough to talk to what your business activity will be. And that's really what's important, especially in a startup base, because we do want to make sure that you are as confident in your business and you know what's going on for your, your project. Um, better than anyone else because you're your walking billboard. So just making sure that you can communicate that as clearly and as concisely as possible. Again, we will look at a business plan, but oftentimes depending on the industry, especially if you've already been doing the work, but you're trying to extend into an actual business, we may also just consider a business canvas model in which you're looking at that one page chart, you're outlining the key factors, you're outlining the key players, and you can really speak to what your goals are for the business that way. And then financial projections, 24 months with realistic revenue assumptions. So don't come to me and say, you know what, Alani, I think I can make $3 million my first year, but it's only me working in the business and I'm selling fruit <laughs> off of my truck. So you want to be as realistic as possible. You want to make sure that your assumptions make sense. So if you're working that food, going back off that fruit truck example, you want to say, I'm working on, I don't know, I'm thinking of the street, 87th and Stony Island or whatever. That's where my location is. I know that traffic there during lunchtime can be around 100 cars or whatever your assumptions are. And I think approximately 20% of those cars will come to me. Just kind of thinking through your assumptions and making sure that you can articulate where your projections are coming from. It's a really big piece for startup businesses because we will be relying heavily on those projections in our underwriting. Existing businesses, again, you are not <laughs> removed from being able to articulate your business. You must also be able to provide a clear and concise elevator pitch. We do want to make sure that you understand your business activity as well, but not only because you are an entrepreneur, but because you're operating this business every day. So you should be able to tell me on the phone really quickly, this is what we're doing. Um, clearly identify the use of funds. So if it's expansion, you need a new product line. If you're trying to go from um, leasing a piece of equipment to purchasing, please explain that. Tell me a little bit more. How does that support and um, you know impact your profit margin line, things of that sort? We just really want to make sure you have a clear picture of what your business needs are and how that will impact your business, especially as a startup business and in historical financial statements. So we do want to make sure that we're, we're collecting your tax returns, your profit and loss statements, your balance sheets, things of that sort. All right. So what does it take? We do want to make sure you understand how you align with the five C's of credit. So cash flow, does your business have the capacity to repay? Can you show that based on your revenues that you are in a good position to service the debt? Because the worst thing that can happen is you get approved for $100,000 credit. I mean, a 
loan, and then you don't have a way to service it. So now you're sitting with $100,000 worth of debt and you are not able to pay it. And now we have to send it to collections or we have to take further action. So we wanna make sure from the very beginning that the cash flow is strong enough. And what that means is that we're looking at revenues, both historic, current and projected, as well as your expenses to see that the business is our primary source of repayment. But we also consider outside income. So if you have outside wages, if you receive in rental income, if you as a person is, are receiving financial um, I don't know, assistance or anything of that sort, and you can prove that through paperwork, we'll add that within our cash flow as well to take it from a business scale to a global scale, but we'll also analyze your personal expenses. So um, I'll get to that and what we do for your credit. Your collateral. Our collateral options are very flexible. There are no strict collateral um, measures that are necessary for our $200,000 um, product, we do ask for that property to be um, listed as our first position lien, but for other options, they can be very flexible depending on the dollar amount and depending on the person's um, current situation. If you have assets, that's great. If not, that is not automatically a no. Credit. Um, for most banks, most lending institutions, they want to see that you have a sufficient credit score or you have been able to support your debt as a greedy. So with GAC, we don't have a minimum credit score, but we are looking at your debts. We are ensuring that you have been paying your debts as agreed. We do take your credit and we do look at the debts that you have outstanding and add that into the cash flow to ensure that once we get a clear picture of all existing debt, all existing expenses, again, we can go back to that cash flow and say that you are um, well situated to service the debt that you're requesting. And then capacity. We want to make sure that you have the capacity to um, support your business, capacity to repay, capacity to um, actually operate in the space that you're trying to get into. And then also conditions of the industry. Uh, things that we don't often talk about, things that are important, is how is the industry performing. So a really big thing that I always point back to is 2020 restaurants and as an industry just weren't doing well. So if you were looking for capital, you may have saw that a lot of lending institutions weren't as willing to lend to a restaurant because of the effects of COVID and the fact that you weren't able to be able to service the debt due to the closure of your business. So just keeping that um, in mind. And then you can move. So these are the reasons in which you'll be ineligible. They do include inability to repay if that's determined through our cash flow, outstanding tax liens, or any issues with any government agencies that does include the IRS, child support, um, student loan debt, as well as the Department of Revenue, as well as any SBA loans you may have. Active bankruptcies that has not been discharged within, well, more than 12 months. Business involved in adult businesses, firearms, real estate, not-for-profit organizations, multi-level marketing programs, or other ineligible, ineligible businesses. And if you're delinquent in your mortgage, again, I already mentioned the rest of those, but recent charge-off delinquencies are things that have not been addressed. And making false statements on your application. We do want to make sure that you trust us, but we also want to make sure that we can trust that the things that you're providing to us are also accurate and well-represented. All right, and if we can advance, here's my contact information. I also drop it in the chat, but I do not mind just copying and pasting that for you all if you have any questions. Take a picture, guys. Take a picture of this. Uh, this is a great resource for you, and you have the email address in the chat. I dropped it in there for you earlier. All right, so uh, you met Alania Harris, so you have a friend with some money. <laughs> uh, you know, you have a rich uncle. This is your rich auntie. So... <laughs> The next person up, we've got Jocelyn from IFF, right? And um, I'm going to let her do her thing. So. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, one second. Oh, wait, it says host disabled. Um, yeah, share it now. Disabled. Okay, one second. Right. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes, can we can see back? it, yeah. but we have somebody with some feedback. I'm not sure who it is. Can it, can everybody it's mute their mics, please? Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so I will not go through the 16 slides because they're lengthy. Um, but my name is Jocelyn. Pleased to be with you all. I use she, her, her pronouns. I am a senior lender, as mentioned, on the IFF team, um, and then. Also joining me, I know, is Adrian Baker, and that is our managing director of our Chicago and Wisconsin market. 
Um, so she's here too, if you all want to connect with both of us. Uh, skip, 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 I'm borrowing. Hello everyone. Um, skip all this. Uh, I was presenting on something. Okay, great, so IFF. Um, so for those unfamiliar, IFF is very similar to Greenwood Archer Capital. We are a, well, similar in terms of what we are. We're a CFI loan fund. So we are not a bank. Um, we do not take deposits. We do not offer lines of credit. We strictly support organizations that are looking to grow by um, investing in capital community facility projects. We also do equipment financing and we do some permanent working capital, which you could say is a line of credit, but it's non-revolving. And so um, we are, oh, that's sort of how we stay in our sandbox and work with our big partners. Um, we, and so this is sort of our mission statement, which I can walk you through, but also I'm happy to send you all the link, but our, our primary goal is to support organizations, almost exclusively nonprofits um, with advancing, you know, their projects in community and you must be doing something more like mission oriented, benefiting people of color, um, communities where they're where they are low income or considered sort of disinvested in from a community development um, standpoint. So that is our, you know, mission orientation work. Are you doing good in the community? Uh, so this is sort of how IFF, what we are. So we are we're actually a little bit more than a lender. We are also a real estate solutions advisory arm. So we provide um, organizations with, if they have a project and they wanna take it from sort of an idea all the way through construction completion, we have that service as well. We are a development arm. We're a research and evaluation institute as well. But our loan fund is sort of our bread and butter. Uh, started in 1988 with an ECE loan. So um, the way that we say that IFF, how you can, ex what, what you can expect from our interaction is that, we're going to help you with debt and equity, um, sort of identify for helping you think through your capital stack. This is where IFF plays. These are other sources of capital that we've seen go into projects. We're always happy to provide that and um, that knowledge. We are going to advocate for your org. We've been around for about 30 years. Um, and so we just have sort of the platform and ability to elevate your project. Um, whether, you know, it's like, hey, can you connect me, Jocelyn, with Samir from City of Chicago? DPD, we can do those kinds of things. Um, and then connect you all obviously with each other as we have a number of programs specifically tater, tailored towards um, BIPOC led organizations. So what is IFF, Capital Solutions specifically? Um, so we, we operate actually in seven different states, Chicago being our largest market, Illinois being our largest state. Um, we do loans to nonprofits, as I mentioned, we also underwrite loans to uh, developers that are providing affordable housing, regulated uh, in terms of, you know, tied to a, like a LIHTC, um, <clears throat> a, a program, supportive housing, those kinds of things. But we also do transitional, naturally occurring affordable housing. And we also underwrite loans to community developers that are seeking gap financing and have some sort of city equity or, you know, public subsidy dollars that are in the project and maybe have explored and are looking for that gap lender. So we do do some um, non, we do some loans to organizations that are not nonprofits, but our bread and butter is really serv servicing our, our nonprofit customer base. Um, we have the ability to do loans as small as 10,000 and all the way up to 6 million. We can fund anything for uh, real estate related. So construction, renovation, acquisition, equipment financing, leasehold improvement loans. Um, we also do bridge loans too to so if you're if we have a specific, if you have a capital grant, we can do that kind of funding as well. Um, we do refinance, new market tax credit, lie tech, everything sort of in the realm of economic revitalization, I would say. Um, our products are designed to be so a, a bit flexible in nature. So we we typically will do loans. Let's say that you were awarded an NOF. We've done um, lending with those sort of programs that appear well, SPIF, um, 
we're, we are on a, a few Invest Southwest projects as well, TIP financing, all those kinds of things. So uh, that's when I say bridge loan, we would, we would do bridge loans. Let's say you were awarded um, a capital grant from DCEO, ARPA, we would bridge that money. Um, we do subordinate leasehold mortgages, which means that we would lend behind a bank equipment uh, and vehicle loans. Also, to think about like your printers and all those things, um, trucks. And we are a little bit, this is where we differ a bit. We can go up to 15 year in term. That's different from a bank. A bank, you know, I think they stay sort of in the five year. Um, so we're longer term lenders. We can go, our maximum amortization though is 20 years. Whereas if you were to go to bank, you can be, you can, you know, do loans up to 30 years and amortization 35. Um, and then our interest rate. So we just price based on collateral available. So if we're going unsecured, uh, where, you know, we have a, a bit of a premium, but otherwise we don't take sort of like, you know, let's say that your project is inherently risky because it, you know, the revenues are not tied to a lease or something like that. We don't really count that. It's just what collateral is available and that's how we offer our pricing. Um, this is sort of what our bread and butter claim to fame, I'm told. Um, we will lend up to 95% of project costs. So that means that if you are an organization and you receive you know, a grant, we would count that as equity towards your project. We are non-appraisal based lenders for loans that are under 3 million. Um, no prepayment penalty. We typically tend to be covenant light, basically no covenants at all. Um, so we don't have sort of hard and fast liquidity ratios that you, were, that you are required to maintain over the period of your loan. Um, and then everything else that we just discussed there. Uh, and this goes into sort of what is a, um, like what is the value of the appraisal and, and it not being a requirement. So, you know, if you were to go to different organizations, they might, and you wanted to fund a project that was, um, the, the real estate was 100,000 uh, in value. IVA says that will fund up to 95,000 and then you just have to come up with the five. So the really nice thing about that is that you get to preserve cash on your balance sheet and, um, and you know, in, invest that in your program and IFF will take on the majority of that sort that's of. A huge, that's a huge option. benefit. That's a huge benefit that she's offering right there. You see that? Like, I'm usually going to say to you, hey, you need to put down 30%, right? You know, you're not for profit, you're a church, whatever, you want to do something, 30%, because I can't do everything. I got to be careful what I do also. I don't want to be on the news. I don't want to have any problems. So I got to look at it and figure out how to do this thing safely for my regulators. As you can see, regulators care about how things look in our balance sheet. So IFF has a bit of ability to get some things done that with 5% down, right? And so if you think about, you know, your, your organizations and whatever they are, you know, what are they trying to accomplish? Can this fit into your, your, your helping you to get more done, buy a bigger building, buy a better building, or fix up a building better? Um, so that's why, you know, I had to stop her there because you guys need to see that IFF, you know, they have this great program here. So check this out. Um, what else? Oh, okay. So this is sort of more like constructive, um, what to expect in our, you know, sort of, I don't want to repeat anything that Alani said because I thought it was so valuable, um, but similar to Greenwood Archer Capital, we sort of, we sort of take a qualitative approach to the underwriting as well as balancing some quantitative. So we we are really looking to assess the risk associated with us getting repaid in the project, um, but we're not typically, you know, sort of underwriting to specific criteria. We like to see healthy debt coverage ratios, as mentioned, so we'll analyze your pro forma and sort of the strength of the project and what is the community impact, who are the people that you're partnering with, and those things. And then we also balance, obviously, like any lender, we do do the five C's of credit. And I guess another way of looking at it is that if you're adding another five, it would be sort of that community orientation. Um, so this is sort of what you can expect. We say at IFF, um, it takes about, you know, at most, assuming that you are, um, you have a project in mind, you're ready to move, you have a purchase agreement about three months. Um, our team operates pretty lean and mean, at least in the Chicago. So it's me and my colleague, Brett, and uh, our manager, Adrian. And so we we try our best to 
um, work with you all because we're not really motivated to sort of buy um, any, you know, with a bank, we don't, we don't do lines, we don't do all those things. So we're just focusing on your real estate project and getting it done. So, um, and it's a small shop. We do some technical assistance, sort of, I guess you could say it's inherent as part of the underwriting. And then we are always happy to introduce you to some of the programs that we have specifically for um, organizations that are in the arts and culture space that are led by BIPOC leadership. Um, and, and I don't wanna take up too much time, but I'm always happy to do sort of a 2.0. Um, and then, you know, let's, what do we need to get to move forward? Acquisition loans, purchase agreement, phase ones, building condition reports, property surveys. If it's a project real estate, let's say that you're like, hey, Jocelyn, I have a loan. I need to buy a building. We're going to get repaid through tenants. We will want to see a building pro forma, a rent roll so that we are really sizing our debt um, based on the projected revenues, acquisition and rehab, everything for an acquisition plus bids, uh, a project budget. And, um, you know, ideally we need to see a contingency of at least 10% and then bridge loans. So this is what I had mentioned. If you have a SPIF, grant, if you have DCEO, if you have NOF money, all of like CRG funding, capital, you know, Chicago recovery, ARPA, we would do all that sort of lending. Um, the bridge loan product is interest only. So that's a little bit different from our standard product. If we can identify a specific source of repayment, we structure those interest only up to three years. Whereas the, our other programs go up to 15 years with um, preferably a matching amortization to the term, but also we can go up to 20. But the most important takeaway here is that the bridge loan is not amortizing. So you just pay interest on the loan balance, outstanding. Sort of like um, a line of credit. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Carl. Um, thanks everybody. And I'm happy to sort of connect. I know I, I walked through this, but I know, I know there's a number of people that are also on the panel. Thank you. And I'm going to drop our one pager um, in the chat. I need to stop sharing. Uh, sorry. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. So, you know, if you're going to drop her information in there. Um, you guys can see it. And then, of course, reach out to her. Um, please leave your email address. I'm thinking about all my, um, you know, anybody who's involved in the faith base or the, the not for profits key, you know, you have big projects, you have ideas, um, you know, there's, there's a person there now, you also have the banks too, but you have another person that you can help get those, those projects off the ground. So um, don't lose her contact information, very important contact information. So next person up is Tiffany Taylor. Um, and so C3 Funds, and I know Tiffany's got a presentation. I thought I saw him earlier. So uh, Charles, if you can line it up for her or let her run with it. Hello, good morning, everyone. Pleasure to be with you all today. I'm Tiffany Taylor, the executive director of C3 Fund, and we, yeah, you can skip over this bio, we went through that. We provide capital to BIPOC, um, and just in case anyone doesn't know what the acronym means, it's Black, Indigenous, People of Color, and Women Real Estate Investors, um, who are doing projects in low to moderate income neighborhoods, um, and we're exclusively focused on like the one to four unit space. Um, just a little background on C3. Uh, we're a certified community development financial institution. We became a certified CDFI in 2017. Our parent company is actually uh, Renovo Financial, but as Renovo's grown and done um, larger loans in terms of dollar amount and project size and expanded into different um, markets, uh, we didn't want to lose sight of focusing on smaller real estate investors or smaller community oriented real estate investors. So that's where uh, C3 was birthed. We can go to the next slide. Uh, the four pillars that C3 focuses on is one, helping to close the racial wealth gap and the gender wealth gap. So we think about, you know, how are the loans that we're providing to our clients, allowing them to increase their net worth uh, by having this access to capital. 
Two, we're investing in historically disinvested neighborhoods. So some of the neighborhoods where, you know, there's a lot of abandoned buildings or um, a lot of vacant land, um, areas where banks will tend to shy away from, C3 is leaning all the way in, and we are exclusively focusing on providing capital to uh, revitalize those distressed neighborhoods. Uh, three, we're focused on creating quality, affordable housing, as well as quality workforce housing. So we think about once our clients develop these land or the properties, you know, how does that uh, affect the end users, the um, first time home buyers that will purchase their properties, or even the rental tenants that can now have quality housing um, in their area. And then the fourth thing that we look at is how are um, the the projects that we are providing capital to, how does that create jobs? You know, on average, you know, it may be supporting 20 jobs or so. And those jobs are quality jobs that are being filled by local tradesmen from the community as well. So those are the four impact metrics that we look at to measure our success. Next slide. So here is the year in review for uh, C3. 57% uh, of our loans were to African-Americans, 36.6% were to Latinos, and 20% were to women. So as I mentioned, all of our loans are to minority real estate investors. Uh, and another thing that I mentioned was closing the wealth gap. So with our C3 borrowers, the average uh, net worth is $800,000. And when you look at that compared to the national net worth of uh, Hispanic and Black borrowers, that's 24 and 36,000 36, respectively. Um, in terms of, uh, we can, I want to just mention, can you go back to that? In terms of lending activity in 2022, uh, we originated 43 loans and that was about $11 million in capital. Um, deployed in these LMI neighborhoods and that created 1,400 jobs. And that was all in the uh, uh, underserved communities. Next slide. <clears throat> Uh, this is a map of the different neighborhoods that we lent in. So you see Austin, Avalon Park, Bronzeville, Chatham, Chicago Heights, uh, Hyde Park, Irvin Park. Um, there's probably about 25 different neighborhoods here in Chicagoland area. Uh, fun fact, 75% uh, of our lending was in the Chicagoland area, but we also expanded into Texas region as well. So 25% of our lending uh, last year was in Texas and this year we're focusing on expanding to uh, North Carolina as well as Boston. Some of our funding partners are US Bank, Providence Bank, Wood Forest, uh, C-Note, and uh, CIBC, as, long, as well as the Department of Treasury. So who do we serve? As I mentioned, it's BIPOC and women real estate investors. We're generally looking for you to have some experience. So we're not really working with um, anyone that's looking to figure out how do they get in real estate. We want you to have experience of doing at least one project in the last year, um, provided that you have some W-2, 1099 income, and perhaps you have some relevant industry experience. So say, for instance, you're a real estate investor, I mean, not a real estate investor, but a real estate agent, and now you're looking to do your own projects um, or two projects in the last uh, three years. We are looking for a minimum credit score of 640, net worth of 250,000, and minimum liquidity of 5%. And this is, these guidelines were actually reduced um, because with our um, parent company, um, it's a little more stringent. You needed a 680 credit score. You needed uh, a 500,000 net worth and um, like 10% of total project costs. And, and then they also were looking for three projects in the last two years. So we kind of um, reduced some of those guidelines to make it more inclusive for minority real estate investors to um, access this capital as well. Would, would they, um, if they bought a building, let's say they bought a two flat and they, they, that's their house, they live in one unit and they rent out the other, does that kind of count as some type of experience or is it more so they've got to go in there and do a construction deal and sell it and that's the success? What's the success story you kind of... Okay. Um, well, two things there. Like one, we don't do any lending to like owner occupied. Um, so we want it to be a true like um, investment property and not like house hacking and um 
And in terms of experience after that, we're looking, we are looking for you to have like a, a, a track record that we can, we can track like uh, an actual licensed GC, you pull permits and things of that nature. Okay. Uh, next slide. So our minimum loan is uh, 75,000. Um, our average loan size is probably like in the $200,000 range and our sweet spot is like less than 500,000. Uh, we could um, go up a little higher than that, but just realistically thinking about um, doing loans in low to moderate income neighborhoods and in the one to four unit space, um, there's really a need for it to go up above that 500,000, but we're we're open to it. Um, so these are all, like I said, acquisition and rehab lending. That's kind of our sweet, sweet spot. These are um, our advanced rates. It's based on a tiered system that looks at your experience, net worth, liquidity, and credit score. And that will determine not only your advanced rates, but also your interest rates as well. Next slide. Uh, this is one of our borrower case study. This is a client um, from the Inglewood neighborhood and invest on the south side of Chicago. He purchased a um, bungalow on 88th and Justine. He purchased it for what, 160,000 and then he did a rehab of about 80,000 and sold it. Um, well, actually he didn't sell it, but it appraised for 310,000. And when the interest rates went up, um, it was, Kind of a challenging time to get get people to um, to qualify for a a mortgage, um, and he had an opportunity where um, someone was looking um, to purchase his property or or do like a lease to own. So he's renting it out at like twenty one hundred dollars, and the goal is for them to go through like a home buying workshop and be able to um, qualify to purchase that home. Uh, this is our new construction pilot. So if you got any of you guys are following what's going on in West Woodlawn, um, there's a team of five black developers that acquired 11 lots from the uh, land bank on three adjacent blocks off of um, 63rd, 64th and Evans in West Woodlawn. So C3, we financed uh, three of those uh, new construction projects. Uh, it's three three units and um, we actually already have a contract on this property on 6444 South Evans and um, it's being um, sold to a um, FHA home buyer, um, like a, a minority who's going to house hack, like live in one and rent out the other um, two units. So uh, if anyone listened to like the press release last week, you know, Bridget Gaynor was talking about the, how these lots were purchase for like $6,000 and well actually it was like $7,000 and now they're all um, valued at like 800,000. So now this neighborhood, it's like eight, 8 million um, over here with the development of this land. So that's that shows you how, how important at having access to capital is for a lot to go from $6,000 or $7,000 to being valued at $800,000. So I will mention that um, this new construction, I uh, just want to reiterate, that is kind of like a pilot for us. Our bread and butter is the acquisition and rehab space. Um, I'm aggressively trying to raise more capital um, for us to be able to do uh, more new construction. Next slide. Um, some of the things that differentiate um, C3 from our industry peers is our speed of execution. And, you know, we um, we are small but mighty and we do everything in-house. And once you uh, complete an application with us and we have like all of your corresponding information, like your verification of liquidity position, uh, we actually don't need any tax returns for a loan under uh, $10 million. So once we have all your information, we can get it approved and closed within two weeks or 10 business days. And then um, what our clients really like about working with us is the speed of our draw process. We can um, fund your draws within 48 hours. So once you close the loan with us and you need a draw, we can, um, our asset management team will come out to your property, compare the scope 
of work that you uh, provided to us at underwriting with the um, work that you've completed, and we can approve that on the spot and you'll receive your funds within 48 hours. So that differs from some other organizations where, you know, they may have um, an outside team that has to come and get scheduled to come out and then they may be going through a title company to fund your draws and, and it may take a couple of weeks. So um, being able to save that time with the draw process um, is extremely beneficial for our clients. And then also with the speed of execution of just even being able to close within two weeks, that's extremely beneficial for our clients too, especially when you have a um, kind of like a bidding situation. It allows our um, clients to bid bid a little more opportunistically where some um, sellers are looking at our funding like same as cash with the ability to close so quickly. Next slide, I think um, that's it. So. Yeah, if anyone's interested in learning more about um, how C3 could potentially fund your deals, you can definitely reach out to me. I provided my information in the chat earlier, but I'll repost it just so it's top of the chat for right now, easily accessible. Thank you, everyone. All right, cool. All right, so Bashan, are you ready? I'm I think a lot ready. of you guys have seen the commercials, you've heard the ads, and there's a lot of, hey, they can do that. <laughs> they created a, pro a program for uh, Black and Latino and, and uh, Indigenous um, people, uh, BMO Harris, and they're doing lines of credit. And so I want Bashan and, and, and of course, Ron, if you want to hop in and just say a few things, but Bashan's leading, um, you know, just kind of let us know a little bit more about the program. And thank you so much, Tiffany, for sharing that. If you don't have Tiffany's information, she'll drop it in the group for us. I know Frida got excited because I know this was, I know Tiffany was for Frida, right? I literally was thinking about you when I invited Tiffany to come out. So, um, you know, please connect. All right. But Vashon, this is your show. Thanks, Carl. Um, I don't see the presentation up. Do I need to bring it up? Uh, Charles, can you do you drop uh, can you upload the demo or can you let her share her screen if she's comfortable with doing that? Um, so, in the meantime, I I, I just want to say uh, the information that has been provided so far, just the diverse um, ways to get access to capital is just amazing. The work that Greenwood and IFCC is doing in the, in, in, uh, the neighborhood and C3 Fund, I mean, I had not seen your presentation. I think the work that you're doing is fantastic. And I think collectively, we all have the same mission that is to close the wealth gap in uh, our in our uh, minority community. So hats off to everyone that has presented prior to me because the information is just great. And it's just awesome to know that there's so many other resources. Uh, do you want me to take over? Yes. Um, I okay. don't have your slide. Okay. Totally fine. Just uh, let her take over if you have it, Rashad, or if you want to go ahead and, I mean, you can present it too verbally. So it's okay. Uh, let me know if it comes up. There you go. I see it. You see it? Okay. Yep. yep. All right. So uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to present um, BMO Harris. I'm going to drop the Harris because it did get dropped. I'll talk about that later. But BMO Zero Barriers to Business is a special purpose credit program that we launched back in 2020, uh, November. And so we'll talk more about that. Uh, a little bit about BMO. Uh, we recently acquired uh, Bank of the West, and which has allowed BMO to grow in size. We've actually doubled our customer base, our employees. We are now up to 25,000, uh, and we are 1,000 branch strongs in 32 states, and our commercial bank is in all 50 straight states. So this acquisition just was uh, completed. Uh, in February of 2023, and we'll look to convert our system sometime in September. So BMO Empower is a community benefit program that was part of uh, taking a look at expanding BMO Empower 1.0, which was a $5 billion three-year uh, commitment to communities for economic recovery. So with the acquisition of um, Bank of the West, we have been able to take a look at increasing uh, our commitment now to 
uh, more than uh, uh, $40 billion in commitments. And so that includes advancing home ownership. And you'll see here the uh, $7.5 billion towards that uh, initiative, and then growing small businesses, uh, $16.5 billion in small business lending that we're looking to uh, deploy uh, now that we're in, in 32 states. This next slide here really just kind of outlines that $40 billion, how that's looking to be spent. 7.5 billion, again, in residential mortgage lending, 16.5 billion for small business lending, 15.5 billion for community development loans and investment, 2 billion for vital community assets and resources for women and minority owned businesses and $135 million in philanthropic uh, commitments here. So BMO is very committed to the community. The, a lot of this, uh, was developed through having conversations with a number of outside organizations, just getting really good feedback as to how we can be more inclusive and how we can deploy those funds. So the program I'm gonna talk about today really is focusing on our women for Black, Latinx and native owned businesses. When we launched this program uh, again back in 2020, some of the information that we took a look at was the number of small businesses that were minority owned. Uh, currently the state, I believe we just pulled this up about a, uh, a couple of weeks ago, 6.6 .6 million bis uh, small businesses out there that identify as minority owned with a 50% growth rate. So we see that uh, new businesses are starting every day. The growth rate is, is, is huge. And so how do we assist those businesses from startup to, to expanding their, their business. Also in a survey that we found that 40% of, um, of non-white, non-minority businesses did not feel that they were having access to capital problems. They, they received full credit amounts, whereas 68% of non-minority, uh, or 68% of non-minority owned firms I said that backwards, 68% of non-minority non firms felt that they got full credit, whereas minority businesses, only 40% felt that they were uh, uh, getting access to capital. So how do we then take a look at closing that gap? And this is kind of gets into the meat of our program, which is a three pillar program, access to capital, access to education, and access to partnerships. Our access to capital piece is a bit up to $50,000 line of credit. Uh, and this to qualify, you currently have to be two years in business uh, located in one of our eight states uh, market footprint. We'll expand to our other states once we convert in December. And you have to um, be able to you know, uh, uh, go into the branch and apply for, for the line of credit. And this is for working capital. The great thing about uh, our program is that you can get pretty much immediate answer right at the time that you apply. So, you know, getting to market, getting those funds dispersed quickly has been very important. We added a business credit program, a uh, business credit card program after we expanded the program. And this was to address the need of those startup businesses. So if you're a startup business, uh, we do have that opportunity for you to apply for the business credit card. In both facilities, we do report to the Small Business Exchange, which then reports to uh, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, and the other business credit bureaus. It's real important for businesses to develop uh, business credit. And so we are really proud of the fact that we're able to help those businesses start developing business credit as they are looking to grow their business. The second pillar of our program, which I think is very important, is the access to, uh, to education. As many of the previous presenters talked about, you know, the five C's of credit, uh, business plans, those types of things, we know that as our business owners become very uh, more involved in their business, sometimes there's some things that may fall through the crack. And so how do we bring back the education piece? We do provide access to education resources on our program websites that are free. You don't, 
you don't have to apply for the access to capital in order to have access to those free tools that are on our site. From uh, a business plan template to a 12 month cash flow analysis where you can add that to your business plan and also just other resources that we provide on our website. And again, that's all free uh, to anyone that wants to go to the website without having to apply for credit. And access to partnerships. You know, it is, it's just a, such a great opportunity to be uh, with so many great organizations today when we talk about access to capital and access to partnerships. Because sometimes, you know, we can't do the deal, even though we've expanded our credit risk bucket for this program. So if you identify as Black, Latinx, women in business and Native uh, or Native owned, we do run you through a different underwriting uh, criteria that's a little bit more expanded, which allows us to get more dollars out. But we can't do what we need to do without partners uh, in, in the area. So the information that we're hearing today uh, is great because if we can't do the deal, we can reach out to one of uh, the organizations that are out there and maybe at, you know have a more lenient underwriting standard to help get those dollars out to you. So what have we done so far? So far as of January 30th uh, this year, over $3,000 in business approved uh, loans, uh, $60 million in available uh, credit that has been deployed. And our average loan size is 38,000 and our average credit card size has been $8,000. We can take a look at doing you know, the line of credit and the business credit card. Uh, uh, up to $50,000 and we've had a number of businesses that have decided, hey, if I'm approved for 20,000, can I get 5,000 in a credit card and 15,000 in the line of credit? The business credit card also allows you to hand over your credit card statement to your accountant and it has all your business expenses and makes it very easy. A couple of highlights on this slide is that um, uh, we implemented Coach in Your Corner, and that's on our website, and that allows you to go in and schedule time to meet with one of our bankers to have a 30-minute conversation about what your needs are and um, possibly uh, how we can get assistance to you. So that's directly on our website. To date, I believe we've had over 700 700 appointments, and we actually kicked it off last February. So it continues to be uh, a, a very robust program where we're ha having great conversations. And in December of 2021, we received the Best in Biz Award, Biz Award for this program for being very innovative in terms of our digital adaptability to the, uh, be able to take applications and give decisions in a timely manner. So we were very happy about being able to qualify and then win this award back in 2021. On this particular slide, we just talk about pretty much, um, you know, the number of ways to partner with us, uh, uh, for the organizations that are on on uh, on the line today, uh, but we've all, uh, from an educational standpoint, we've deployed, and this is 500 hours, and I'm sure it's doubled that. Where we have our bankers, myself, my co, uh, my peers that are in the program, along with Ron, who's in, uh, on the line today, and I'd be happy if he'd step in and take uh, take a minute and uh, uh, introduce himself. But we actually have been boots on the ground providing education for business owners and um, through organizations such as the Chicago Urban League or uh, other organizations that look for uh, that additional support in delivering content. Uh, the five C's of credit, as we talked, that was talked about earlier, it, it is a common thread in terms of taking a look at providing access to capital and how do you hit on all five of those seeds of credit to get that access to capital. These, uh, this is just a slide that uh, talks about our website uh, specific to our program. So we have our Black and Latinx, our BMO for Women in Business, which I'll uh, uh, pause just for a second for the third, for our third year in a row, I believe it is, we've been able to uh, provide grant opportunities for uh, eight women, $10,000 each, and that 
grant program generally kicks off in October of each year. And so we're very proud of that opportunity. And our expansion to our native owned businesses, we kicked off a couple of months ago. And so we have a website for that uh, particular uh, business line as well. And finally, this is our team, Ron, again, Ron Millsap, who's on the call here today. Myself, Leticia uh, Flores Poole, who gives great direction, uh, not only to the Black community, but our Hispanic community. Denise uh, Pachuca, who covers our Wisconsin market, and Aaron Likes, who's our pro uh, program manager. And so we're a small team covering a very large area, but we're very happy with the results of the program. We continue to take a look at the data and where we need to make tweaks, we will. But more importantly, we look forward to working with organizations such as uh, Chatham today and uh, the other CDFIs that are participating in this conversation. That concludes my presentation. Right, right, right. So you see, you got the team there. You got Bashan. I know you got a question, right? I mean, she's doing lines of credit for people, right? So two years in business, you know, you got your stuff in order. You went through uh, Alania, or you went through Amanda, and you paid your, lo your loan back, and you didn't borrow money you didn't need. You paid it back on time, and now you, you come to me, or you come to her, Bimo, and you say, hey, I want to do something more, and they give you that line, and you're like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. I don't understand why people say banks aren't lending money. I get lending every time I want money. Well, because you're doing the process. <laughs> we're just a bank. We're in a box. So we got regulators. They keep us in the box. When we're not in the box, bad things happen. All right. <laughs> so we got to be nice and conservative for you and very, very proper and safe because you want to feel safe with us. So, um, you know, you got Vashon's information, guys. You've got uh, and she's going to drop it in the group chat and, you know, you can send her an email. Uh, I see Ted Hollander on there. You know, he's a top CPA. You know, the gentleman always is keeping us, you know, financials in order, of course, so that we can look at your financials and get you approved for the correct amount of funds that would work for your business, right? So um, the last but not least, actually the person who started the show for us, um, if she's still available to chat a little bit and go a little deeper, uh, Amanda asks you, is uh, one of our partners from Allies for Community Business, and again, she's got a product offering that's very helpful for a startup business. So um, Amanda, if you feel comfortable sharing a little bit, and if not, if anybody has any questions, drop them in the chat. We also and, got uh, Sean Boone from PNC, if he wants to, uh, he's right. on the line currently. And also a CBA right. board member as well, who uh, supports. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, that, you know, so, so just remember, you also have a PNC person on the on the call too, right? So if you like to have multiple relationships and that type of thing you want to do, PNC does some really cool things for investors who want to buy five plus unit buildings. You know, that's kind of one of the things that they can do well. So all as small business lending. So you've got options, right? Um, I think the biggest thing with this call was about making sure that you guys had um, the ability to get things done. And I wanted you to know everybody so that way you could feel comfortable you know, asking questions. But here's Amanda. Um, Amanda, you, you want to give a little bit and then we'll get Sean go and then we can wrap it up and let, you know, Melinda or the team sure. kind of take over. Okay. Oh, well, thank you again. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for putting my bio up there. Uh, again, my name is Amanda Askew. I'm the senior community lender with Allies for Community Business. Um, actually, I do have a few slides to share if possible. Um, if that would be okay. Uh, Charles, can you help her share it or what does she have to do? Yeah, no, so I, I made her co-host. You should be able to share now. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Everyone can see my screen here. All right. Again, we're allies for a community business, nonprofit organization serving Illinois, Indiana. And the purpose of our organization is to help entrepreneurs in three ways, which will be capital, coaching, and connections. So during the pandemic, we, me and plus I, I know my other colleagues on the line here, we definitely helped at a local, state, 
and um, level to get make sure that uh, much needed funds were dispersed to entrepreneurs that definitely need it. Um, because of that, we were able to disperse $520 million, um, which means that 19,000 businesses got free business coaching, and then 24,000 businesses were able to be funded between Illinois and Indiana. Okay, so as far as, like I said, we help in three ways, capital, coaching, and connections. We'll start with capital. So at capital, we have two lending products, which is a term loan and a line of credit. The smallest amount being $500, the largest amount being $100,000. And we also, from time to time, manage grant programs, whether they're uh, hyper-local, like West Side of Chicago, or countywide, or statewide. Um, we are not currently managing any grant programs at this time, but there is grant information on our website, which I can put the link in the chat, and you can check our website for any new grant programs that you may feel you qualify for. Definitely encourage you to apply. Okay. Okay, so typically we offer loans, again, largest amount being 500, largest amount being 100,000. So typically our average loan size is between 10 to 20,000. So for anyone looking for a loan up to 25,000, uh, the first step is that we do um, pull personal credit. Now we don't have a minimum credit score, but we look at your credit behavior. And our definition of credit behavior is in the past 24 months, have you had any bankruptcies or collections larger than $500? For the last 12 months, have you been paying your credit cards and loans on time and your credit utilization? We look to see are your credit cards maxed out? So based on the information on your credit report, you should be able to receive a pre-approval offer. And again, that's based on the largest and longest uh, thing that you have been borrowed so far over a period of 12 months. Then our next step would be your financial statements where we ask for the last three months of your personal and business bank statements. And again, that's just to look to see if, you know, your business has income coming in. Do you have income outside of your business that, you know, can help uh, facilitate a loan request? Now, if there are some challenges on the credit report or you may have a limited credit history, um, we do have a loan called the Credit Builder Loan where you can get at least up to $2,500 um, that you would pay back over the span of 12 months. But that particular uh, product is a great um, intro into Allies for a Community Business. So if you were to apply with us and get a $2,500 loan and you pay that back successfully in 12 months, there is an opportunity to uh, possibly apply for more funding after you have paid off that for 12 months. Now, any loan amount above $25,000, not only do we ask for the credit report, financial statements, we also ask for the last three years of your tax returns. And that's just to see, you know, has your business been profitable for the last three years? Now, coaching. So we have a two-pronged approach to our coaching program. We have one-on-one -on -one business coaching. So for those of you who, I got an idea in my head and I want to turn it into a business. We have business coaching for you. Or if you are already an established business owner, it's like, you know what? I'm doing well, but I want to expand into a second location or I want to hire more people. I need to streamline some things. We have a business coach for you. And we also have a group coaching program, which is called the Neighborhood Entrepreneurship Lab. And that is a special cohort of entrepreneurs who hit a certain um, thresholds in that they're able to um, receive one-on-one -on -one coaching from a team of like strategic like investors and mentors. And that program is application-based, but then there's also one-on-one -on -one coaching from for anyone that would like it. Okay. And again, our one-on-one -on -one business coaching, again, if you're early stage, emerging, or established. So there's a business coach for any level of business wherever you are. Okay. And you can find all of our information on a4cb.org. Um, again, you can apply for a loan with us online. You can schedule a free business coaching. Or if you want to refer someone that you think may be a good fit for us, you can definitely do that through the website as well. And of course, we are a nonprofit organization. So you are welcome to donate as well. 
And again, my name is Amanda Askew, Senior Community Lender. Thank you for the opportunity. Here is my email, and I'll also put it in the chat. Thank you again. All right, perfect. And then Sean, Sean Boone, let them know where you are, please. If you can talk a little bit, just so they know, you know, you have a person that's a branch manager in our team and also a leader in banking. Um, Sean, are you able to, if you can't talk, it's okay, but PNC is here. Um, and so- Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Uh, hey guys, I uh, just wanted to drop in for a second. Of course, I don't have a slide prepared, not, but uh, just to say, uh, yeah, I am here with PNC. Uh, Branch on 87th and Cottage Grove. Uh, we do offer uh, business lending. Uh, so uh, five units and up on the, on the commercial side. Um, uh, this is where we land on, on, on as far as uh, real estate investors and whatnot. Uh, and then also we're doing business line of credits over here, same uh, as my other partners are. Um, our business line of credit, no doc up to $100,000. Uh, looking for at least two years in business and, um, you know, strong credit score of at least a 680. So. Uh, a couple of the products that we offer, but of course we got some of the similar products that the other uh, banks are offering. Um, definitely here is a resource. I can put my information in the chat as well. And uh, just wanted to say, you know, good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you, Carl, for having me on for a second. So we got, we got the tools, right? Um, all right. Just, you have my information. It's in the group chat. And then uh, I want to give Chatham a chance to do their thing, right? So I think this is, you know, I know you guys like to do introductions. I know you guys like to kind of give some updates on what's going on with Chatham Business Association. So I do want to kind of hand it over back to you um, and allow well, us first, to be normal. So first of all, can you please join me? You can do a reaction button. Great meeting to Carl and putting this together for us. There's no reason in the world a business doesn't have access to technical support, access to capital lending. Uh, this presentation has saved a lot of energy of you talking to each lender. This would have taken you a year's time to find this out had you did it individually, which is the value of an organization. Uh, that is what Chatham Business Association does. For businesses, you should not hesitate to give us a call and let us do the consultation even prior to you reaching out to the lenders. We've had great experience with a lot of the lenders on the call. We can help you review paperwork. We can share that experience to cut down the time. Uh, they are very communicative with us. So we recognize sometimes you get a little anxious. We can reach out to them as well because we can not only help with that, Sometimes we can make sure. You may want a loan, but you might need to uh, also make sure you're insured. We might need to make sure we're doing, how are we collecting the debts on your uh, outstanding contracts? One of the things most small businesses are unable to do is have a debt collection in-house process. Using lines of credit can take the angst out of it and loans, and you have to manage that. Let us help you. It is a lonely process to be a business owner as you're navigating through being certified, as you're navigating through contracts and RFPs and taking advantage of the different grants that allow now Black businesses to purchase the real estate in which they live. It's overwhelming, but it's not overwhelming if we can streamline it and bring these very reputable community organizations through the Navigator Program, lending institutions, and other organizations together. There's no reason now why any business should be stagnant or standing still or saying what they don't have. If you don't have it, let us work with you first so that maybe we can make sure you're asking the right person the right question and you're going after the right product. So please use us as a tool to do that. We so appreciate uh, our lenders. I think Gwen had to get off. Gwen Shaw, she's another great board member. Um, she is, you know, on the insurance side. Uh, she works just as hard as our other board members to um, 
I mean, they are a text away when we're asking them to jump on calls and look at this deal and talk to us and get things done. So I just want to thank the whole CBA board members for being so active. Uh, and Carl, we so appreciate this and what you're doing. So um, I think I'm going to say Gwen has to get off because she didn't speak yeah. up. Well, you okay. know, the big, the big thing is, right, you guys got a resource. I'm here. You got some precious. Oh, there's Gwen. Okay, but you got Gwen, go ahead. You got something precious here. So make sure you refer your friends to Chatham Business Association if they want to be serious about their business, right? If they want to grow their business and they don't have time to bounce their head around in the corner looking for things, and they just want to find the resources, come on, get them on in here with us. Belinda's got the team. They know what we can do. You know what we can do. And let's figure out how to get this stuff done faster. So also, when I have some announcements to make. Before, um, when did you want to say something before we I mean, turn it over not to really. our team? I, I put it in the chat and I was just, you know, mentioning the fact that just like you said, it's important to make sure that you have your insurance in place, um, especially if you're looking to do some type of renovation building type of development loan. Um, a lot of the lenders have specific requirements for insurance, so it's better to have that information up front uh, rather than get involved and, and ready to, you know, um, get involved in the deal. And then all of a sudden, oh, I got to have this. And, and sometimes the requirements are a little bit higher than what you expect. So make sure that you do that before and not after. Uh, and before I, I do turn over to this wonderful team to, to please join me, uh, the CBA team from Jennifer to Beverly to Lorenda to Richard. Uh, I mean, they, Charles, um, Gloria, I can't tell you how hard they work on behalf of the community. And we also, uh, I need to congratulate Gloria Jenkins, who's part of our team, she is also one of the community, oh, I forgot the name of it, but she was just elected to the safety board for the third district. Uh, she had to, she was on the ballot and she did a lot of great work. And so we're, congratulations to her and glad, you know, she can connect because safety is very important to economic development in our corridor. So um, congratulations to her. But let me turn it over to Jennifer Atkins, who- um, Hello. <laughs> Did a great job Everybody. of working to make sure our monthly membership meetings are presented well. Absolutely. And welcome. I think that was an awesome lineup. I have so many questions, and um, there will be a guide put together. So we're going to put a nice guide together and make sure that everybody, all the different types of needs, the, all the different products that were presented, the financial products are presented. We're going to make sure that you get a guide so you can follow up and have that at your fingertips as you move forward. Um, wanted to say, without further ado, the member uh, or the business of the month for March is Gwen Shaw. So can we please uh, all congratulate her? We have so many questions about insurance and financial products and uh, people take it for granted that they know exactly all the ins and outs of all the different types of insurance products. So please call Gwen Shaw and her team. If you need any type of insurance product, financial product, she does the investment, you know, your retirement programs and all that. So she's got um, awesome things to share with you. You just got to reach out. So congratulations again to Gwen Shaw. We'll be pushing this out on social media all throughout Women's History Month. We want to um, pull up the next uh, recognition for the fact that we are in March and we have a lot of trailblazing women on this panel in Chicago and your family and the nation. So yeah. we want to recognize Melinda Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> we want to recognize women that go outside of the norm, go outside the box. They take the path um, untaken. They make their own path. They have people who follow them as they take that path. So we wanna recognize uh, Women's History Month and women who are trailblazers. Um, then I wanted to go into our, um, our navigator program. Melinda touched on the road show. We are doing some things that have not been done before. We have gotten secretly an accolade from Mark Ferguson of the SBA that we are a top um, producer of this pilot program. So this has never been done before by the SBA, this community navigator program, which they're trying to figure out how does the SBA 
reach out and really help the minority and the small businesses that they know that they had have not and cannot do on their own. So the Chatham Business Association has a grant through the SBA and we on our own decided, well, how are we going to do this grant? How are we going to deliver it? We're going to create a roadshow. So we're going to communities around. We're going to Rockford. We're going to the West side, we're going to West loop, high park. You know, we're going to, we're going all over with our five cohort uh, business developers and doing a show. We're going to send you a registration link for this show so you can register. We want you to share this and share the link and join the road show. Get on, a, get on the bandwagon and come out and visit and participate in one of our road show events. And there'll be more events added as we go along. So, um, so that's that. Next up for April, we will be live in the Discover Center in the Shine Bright Room. The Shine Bright Room is the where, you know, and the Discover Center there on Cottage, 87th and Cottage. We will be in person. Of course, we'll have all the breakfast and all the networking. So please come to our next Chatham member meeting, April 11th at the, at the uh, Discover Center. Next up is the Cook County Land Bank, Jessica Caffrey. She's the new executive director and she's really new in this role, like not, not even two months. So we want to welcome her and she's got a lot to share as well. So please come out, please register. And that's the, all the announcements that I have. Uh, we do have a survey. Uh, we always want to know what we're doing good and what we could do better. So um, Charles, you can pull this survey up. Um, again, you're going to be getting a, a follow-up and you can always go online and take our survey. If there's something that we said we should we didn't say or let us know. We'll 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 look at that. Okay, so that's all I really had. And thanks again for joining us. And uh, for the lending uh pre presenters, we'll be reaching out to you, CBA yes. and the navigator team, to do a one-on-one, -on -one, if you don't mind, as we talk about the program and what it does and maybe how you can strategically partner with us. Uh, we've had some successes with a lot of uh, the lenders on here. Um, PNC, obviously, Fifth Third, uh, BMO. So, you know, we would love to expand that and what you are offering. You know, the city has this new developers organization where they're doing a lot of uh, teaching more developers to do the development in the city of Chicago. We funded on the federal government to do um, entrepreneurship for women veteran-owned businesses, as well as women returning citizens you know, coming straight out of the system. So we would love, you know, please accept our invitation to meet with us and the folks individually aside of this. And one other thing, as part of the Navigator Program, one of CBA's specialty is we work with businesses on team and agreements and joint ventures. Uh, it's important as the opportunities are expansive uh, and to do that, we have to prepare each business in order to be able to be an attractive partner or to team on any agreement. So uh, just please know that, feel free to refer businesses to us as you're looking at the CTA project and these other large projects. Sometimes we have to do teaming agreements and joint ventures just to get the experience on the business resume so that we can look at that path uh, in growing because transportation and logistics is really huge here in Illinois. So uh, feel free to refer businesses to us who are interested in that. You know, those are trucking and other businesses and let us explore the opportunities with that business and help, you know, and let's work together collaboratively to make sure they're successful. So if that's all, and I also want to acknowledge Bruce Montgomery, who is also a SBA navigator. He is on the call as well. So uh, he's part of the road show. So please, we'll see you next month, but make sure you're signed up. Jennifer's going to send you the guide. We'll make sure you know where the road shows are. Uh, and thank you for spending your morning with us, second Tuesday of each month. Thank you. We'll see you in person next week, next month, next month in April. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Good job, everybody. Bye-bye.